Hello and welcome to On Point. I'm Monica Trousey. Joining me today is His Excellency Ilan Suleimanov, Ambassador of Azerbaijan to the United States. Mr. Ambassador, thank you for joining me. Thank you. Mr. Ambassador, Azerbaijan is making energy news with the announcement of a final pipeline route to transport natural gas to Europe. The Trans-Adriatic Pipeline has been selected as the final project. Why was the South European route chosen and what's your view of the final choice? Thank you very much for your invitation, uh, Mr. Ozzy. In fact, uh, this is indeed a very good news. Um, I think what we finally have is a decision how to extend the Southern Gas Corridor, which is a priority, priority project for the European Union and for Europe as a whole. Um, the decision to go with the trans pipe, uh pipeline came, as I think, as no surprise, because uh, apparently, according to the Chardonnay Consortium, it makes a great economic sense. Uh, and... Uh, this is a project which will bring, uh, finally, Azerbaijani gas from the Chardonnay field to European uh, con consumers and specifically to EU, to Greece and, and Italy. Now, that, that decision by itself does not mean that other uh, countries uh, along the route will be devoid of Azerbaijani gas. So even now we're talking about interconnectors, uh, possibly in the future to Bulgaria, possibly to Romania and other nations, which will accommodate greater amounts and volumes of Azerbaijani gas coming in. In general, what we have, though, is uh, truly a major contribution from Caspian region to energy security of Europe. It's a long-awaited decision. And following the announcement, uh, the U.S. State Department released a statement saying that bringing Caspian gas to international markets will contribute to meeting global energy demand, which is critical to sustaining economic growth. So you really feel that you're going to be playing a major role in the broader context here? We hope so. Uh, we appreciate the U.S. statement, first of all, and we appreciate the U.S. support throughout um, over the two decades we've been working with our partners on developing the uh, Caspian energy resources, be it oil to Bakut Bilisi Jehan pipeline and now to gas uh, in the uh, southern corridor and now it goes to Tran Trans Anatolian pipeline, Tan up and goes into TAP to Trans Adriatic pipeline. I think we will be contributing to the uh, welfare and prosperity of greater Europe. Uh, consider this this is uh, one of the first significant good news for for the Greek economy. If you look at Greece today, it will be a major investment in Greece A and B, it will create jobs and long-term uh, sustainable growth in, in, uh, in Greece, plus contributing to energy security of Greece. But what timeline are we talking about for the construction of the pipeline? I mean, how soon could we see those jobs? We're looking at, uh, I understand that the pipeline, it's, uh, the gas will be delivered by about 2018, 2019. Okay. So we're looking at that frame. But of course, the feasibility studies, the contracts, the preliminary construction will all go on in the meantime. Ambassador Morningstar, the U.S. ambassador to your country, has been a major supporter of the project. What impact do you think this has on your country's relationship with the United States? I think that's just another validation and a proof of the very beneficial, mutually beneficial partnership between the United States and Azerbaijan. We've been working together for a long time, and that shows what we can do together. That's a good thing. Russia remains the main player in the region yes. on natural gas. What is the political dynamic between your con two countries? We have uh, had even uh, working relations with our Russian neighbors, and we're developing uh, uh, we're developing a relationship which should be beneficial for the region. We do not come as direct competitors uh, to the Russian production of gas because, as you understand, Russia has significant volumes. Uh, however, we would like to play in a competitive open market and what we believe that Azerbaijan's contribution to the market will be good for the energy security and competition, and at the end of the day, it's good for Russia as well. What influence does Russia currently have on the natural gas market and natural gas pricing? Russia is a significant player in the uh, East, uh, East European and European market as a whole. I believe it's about a quarter of the market is delivered by the Russian uh, monopoly gas firm. And do you think that how critically are they at influencing the price, and how might you be able to influence that once you have your natural gas on the market? Uh, the the prices are changing. It's a very fluid situation, and we believe that the spot prices would work for us. In fact, we believe that our gas is competitive, competitive at any, uh, at in any under any circumstances. In general, I know now there was a talk, a lot of talk about possible LNG exports, imports plus uh, plus shell gas. Our belief is that we will be benefiting and will be competitive the more uh, supplies there. Are. Do the Russians view you as a competitor? Uh, they say they don't, so we we'll take them at their word. What are your government's plans for developing the gas that exists beneath the Caspian? 
Or part of it is, of course, Chardonnay's two uh, consortium, which is that the first phase would would bring the gas to to tap. But there are additional volumes which we believe uh, will be brought to phase two and phase three, which go to the Balkan nations and further the, uh, up into Europe. But that's not only Chardonnay's. There are also Asiman, uh, and Babek and Apshon, other fields outside um, offshore in Azerbaijan, which are actually quite promising. There's a lot of p political instability in the region. How concerned are you that that might spill over and affect the safety and security of the pipeline itself? Well, whenever there is a resource competition, there is a certain degree of tension. Uh, however, uh, Azerbaijan, in partnership with Georgia, Turkey, and the United States, have shown that even when the situation is tense, you could build projects, and uh, Bakud Bilisi Jehan is a good, pr a good uh, proof of that. In fact, those kind of projects contribute to stability. You can't have uh, stability without prosperity. That, I think, goes hand in hand. In fact, this kind of project will contribute to making our region more stable and more prosperous. So we spoke about some of the economic impacts that some of the European nations might see as a result of this pipeline. What about your country? What are you expecting this to do for your economy? Azerbaijan has benefited greatly from our energy projects, including Bakul Bilisi Jehan. We look forward to benefiting from this as well, because what we need is sustainable growth, which will be then reinvested in areas outside energy sector, so transportation, uh, education, new technologies, and all this. As a whole, uh, we believe that the sustained growth based uh, to which energy is an engine in this particular case is a very promising development for the future. All right. Mr. Ambassador, thank you for coming on the show. Nice thank to you, see you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. And thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.